Good afternoon and welcome to the Careers Corner. Please, could you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Mickey Carroll and I am a journalist at Sky News. Fantastic. And what does your job involve, please? Uh, my job involves making digital documentaries for um, social media, so Instagram, Snapchat, um, YouTube, and then sometimes they go on. And what was your career's journey to get to this point? Uh, I did my A-levels um, and then went to university. I went to City University in London um, and did a journalism degree there. And essentially just kind of did everything I possibly could there. I took the year abroad and studied in Denmark, I did all of the work, work experience I could, um, badgered everyone for all of their contacts. And then out of that, um, got a job with one of the yeah, people I was really working experience with, which was the economist and their young people's charity department. And spent three years there making documentaries um, for young people. It was great because it's a very small team, so I could kind of learn the ropes and make lots of mistakes without it going on TV or anything like that. Um, and then I went to the Telegraph and I made documentaries there for social media and young people on social media, essentially. Um, and from there, I spent a year there over here and now I'm going to Brilliant. Um, do you think you need any particular qualification skills or character traits to be successful? Yes, yeah, so you don't need a degree. Like, lot, lots of people have them but you don't actually need them. Um, but what you do need is an NCTJ which is a journalism qualification um, by the awarding body who give us um, press cards and it just shows that you know media law um, it'll show employers that you kind of know how to make stories stuff like that so if you don't have a degree it's totally fine but you do need to get an NCTJ um, and in terms of character traits I think the two most important ones for me would be being willing to work really really hard um, it's long hours and they're really early hours um, it's, it's not the kind of glamorous late into the night shift it's the 5am start um, and you've kind of got to keep cheerful throughout because once you get a bad name, so it's a contact with the industry, so you get a bad name for yourself and that's it. And um, so you've got to be willing to work hard, cheerfully, um, and you also need to be really curious, because if you're not curious, you're not going to find stories and then you decide to be journalist. Brilliant. So could you describe a typical day as much as possible? Yeah, so I have two types of days. Um, one is very dull, um, so I will wrap it through quickly, but luckily it's not the majority of my day. Um, it is... Uh, essentially just turning packages, turning films that were made for TV into stuff for, into films for like, YouTube and things like that. Um, I don't know if it sounds more than that. Um, and then my second kind of day, which is the majority of my days, is making documentaries myself for those platforms. So a good example is yesterday, we're making a film about black phobia and body image. Um, and so I was up at half five um, and then got to the office and we started um, to find interviewees. So that's calling people, um, getting on social media, chatting to people, basically getting people to agree to talk to you. Um, and then you've got to find a crew. So that's camera operators, producers. I tend to be a producer, although I also am a camera operator whenever I need to be. Um, and then going out and talking to people. So that could be going to an interviewee's house, um, which at the moment is very difficult because of the coronavirus. Um, it could be going out into the street and just grabbing people on the street and getting them to talk to you. Um, so you're out with the camera operator there. And then coming back to the office with all of your film and sorting it out, basically getting it into the system and starting to edit. So I think yes, yes. Okay. So what are the parts you enjoy most about your job? Um, I'm a massive nerd about all of this and I actually I, I really like my job so there's not many parts of things uh, I think for me the, the bits that I love most are going out and interviewing people and talking to people um, there we, we just meet so many strange and wonderful characters and it's just it's, it's so interesting I mean I get to see parts of the country and parts of the world that I would never be able to see if I didn't see it and what do you think are the biggest challenges that you have faced? Um, it's partly uh, the long hours. It's not because it's quite it's quite an addictive job. Um, it's quite easy to forget that there's like a world outside of, of doing it, and the work-life balance can sometimes be thrown away a little bit. 
So partly kind of the hours, um, but also when I came into the industry, I was very lucky to have some very nice bosses who gave me criticism quite gently. I was not thick skinned at all. Um, and I've had to develop a very thick skin because everyone in a newsroom it has very short time and can be quite snappy. And I think at first I found that quite difficult, but now I've developed a thick enough skin to just let it roll over me. Brilliant. Um, and what advice would you give to someone considering joining the profession? Um, I would say, uh, I think first one would be you, studying is really obviously is very important. Um, but you also need to be out and talking to people and finding out things and listening to stories because unless you have those stories, you can make you know, journalism about. Um, so yeah, just going out and meeting people, being chatty and, and getting in touch with people, stuff like that. And then the second one um, is a little sound. Um, second piece of advice. Oh yeah, that was it. Um, I didn't follow this, and I sort of regret it. Is to read the news. As much as you can and sometimes obviously it's very dull but you can find papers that write really nice i read the new york times more than anything else because they write in a way that i really like um and write as much as you can whether that's a diary or just like a notepad that you scribble things down in. but you don't necessarily need to post all of them and i made the mistake of posting all of them and now there's just so much stuff on the internet that i'm like oh and it's excruciating and i think there is a merit to reading and writing constantly but you don't have to make it public because you are still young Okay, and um, and who would be your role model? Um, my role model would be um, I'm going to sound like such a nerd when I say this. Uh, my role model would be one of my lecturers, who was called Suzanne Franks, and she was a uh, very she was a very good BBC journalist, um, and she also was just very to the point straight talking incredibly clever and I think ever since she was my lecturer I've always tried to be more like her. Um, Suzanne. Brilliant and what advice would you give your 15 year old self? I would tell my 15 year old self um, I think I would tell my 15 year old self that it is totally possible I think you hear a lot especially about journalism where I've had I assumed that journalism was going to be an incredibly hard profession to get into, and it is hard, but it is possible and it's really fun once you get there. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mickey. I really appreciate it. Great.